Can we all just say that we're definitely happy that this damn show is at the end of the road, like boys to men. Woo, we're happy. We are happy, honey. Let's get into the review. Still, I can't let it go. It's unnatural. You belong to me. I belong to you. Uh. Baby, I'm sorry. All those nights you just heard me, you just ran out with that other fella. Baby, I knew about it. I just didn't care. You just don't understand how much I love you, do you? I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't understand. I'm so happy, like Ashanti, that this shit is on a season finale and we're headed to the reunion. So I'm so happy, like happy to the to, like just happy y'all just happy but we're gonna go ahead and get into the review but before we get into the review let me let you guys know what's coming up on the platform now um like i said on my last video by the end of the night we will know who's hosting the whether you like it or not panel and more than likely it will probably be josiah okay but just be on the lookout for the link the link will be available tomorrow before the panel starts but it will probably be josiah or yacrates one of them because really be hosted in terrence's place last week so um it's probably gonna be josiah this week so just be on the lookout for that and it will be at 9 15 eastern as it's always is okay 9 15 eastern okay um what's coming up after that um oh yeah young fresh and new is next saturday okay and it will be featuring a um a little known blogger by the name of j to the btv yes indeed we'll be talking to him about his um journey as a smaller content creator and him being on the rise be on the lookout for him on Saturday at 12, 15 p.m. Eastern time. Also, Who Was Wrong will be featuring Really BTV. And we will be talking about the beef between Heaven Lee and Mariah, okay, from Married to Medicine. So make sure y'all tune in for that um, a week from today for Who Was Wrong. Christmas Eve, a special Christmas present. Me and Bully B, we will be getting together for Who Was Wrong. Okay, so with that being said, child, we're going to go ahead and get into this review, child, because I know y'all been waiting for you know, because I don't go live on Love and Missions Vietnam, child. I'm going to leave that to Terrence. I ain't doing it no more. Okay, so let's get into it. So, what my note said. Okay, so, Stormy and Melody. Melody is getting her a massage. And when I saw her laying down getting that damn massage, I'm like, bitch, I, who, 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 who's your masseuse? Because I need me a massage. Like, I've been saying for the longest time, I need me a massage. I need somebody to really get this back into shape, like, crack these bones. Like, I need a goddamn massage. Yo, okay, period. I need me a massage. Like, straight up. Um, Stormy comes while she's getting the massage. So, you know, Stormy comes in, you know, they, you know, they do their little, pre their, their pleasantries and stuff like that. Hey, girl, how are you? Hey, girl, hey, girl. You know, that type of stuff. So they sit down and they talk. And, um, you know, they start talking about the trip. And Melody was like, you know, we went on a family trip to Destin. You know, we had us a great time. You know, everybody was there. We was mainly doing it for the kids and the kids only. So Stormy was like, well, you know what? That's that's good. I'm glad that y'all are able to come together, go on this trip, you know, do what y'all need to do for the sake of the children, right? For the sake of the children. However, Melody said, even though we had a good time on the trip, it's the stuff that happened after the trip that got me pissed off right about now. And so Stormy was like, well, what happened at the end of the trip? So she said, after we got back, I had COVID. I was sick with COVID. And Martel decided to go and tell Arion my business. She didn't say Arion name on the show. I said it. So, you know, Arion don't need to be coming for mail. I said a name, child. But, yeah, she said that Aryan, you know, he went to Aryan telling her business about, you know, COVID and stuff like that. She felt like he shouldn't have did it. And, and here's my thing. In a way, he shouldn't have told Aryan anything in regards to Mel at all due to the fact that anything that's dealing with Mel, Aryan going to take that shit to the fucking Internet. We already know that she is. She going to take that shit to social media. She going to go live. She going to do all of this shit. She going to do it. Because she wants attention. And even though she says that she doesn't want the blogs to talk about her, she wants all of us, the YouTubers, the blogs, everybody else to talk about her ass. That's why she do the shit that she do. So she can stop acting like she don't want the attention because she do. 
That's the, that's the first thing. The second thing is, if Knox is sick, I don't think that if there's anything wrong for Martell to say, you know, he was, a, you know, saying that maybe he shouldn't have said Mel's name. Maybe he should have said Knox was around someone that had COVID. He didn't necessarily have to say Mel had COVID. You know what I mean? He could have just said Knox was around somebody that had COVID. We just found out he had COVID. You know, go get him tested. You know, if he's sick, go get him tested and see what's going on. But he was around somebody that was sick. He didn't have to say Melody's name. But we're going to get into that part towards the end because, you know, they had a whole confrontation about it. But she didn't appreciate him talking about her to Aryan, which, like I said, you can look at it in two ways. If he and Aryan got a child together, Aryan has a right to know, you know, how did where did he get this from? But he could he didn't have to say it was Melody. He could have just said it was somebody around. Like I said already, I don't want to repeat myself. He could have, you know, just said it was somebody that was around, you know. But at the same time, the history between Aryan and Mel is not that great. So that is the reason why she feeling a way about it. So, you know, I, I could really drag Melody for this whole thing and call it a petty ass situation, but it's really not a petty ass situation. I get exactly where she's coming from. Me and her don't rock with each other. We didn't got into it on the phone. We didn't have words on social media. Like, I don't need you talking about anything that I got going on with her. I don't care if I went up to the Piggly Wiggly and got me a peach and brought it home and made a peach cobbler with the motherfucker. I don't need her knowing it. So I get what she's saying. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I understand what she's talking about when it comes down to that. Like, that girl is not her friend. They don't talk to each other. That's the same woman that, you know, you gave a baby to, knowing that, you know, that she was fucking with and she was disrespecting the hell out of me and you allowed it to happen. You don't need to be discussing me with her, period. So I get what she's saying with that. So then they start talking about Sheree and Martell. You know, the blog's been asking her about Sheree and Martell, you know, and Melody don't feel no type of she said, I really don't care about Sheree and Martell being together. Like, it's really none of my business at the end of the day. Like, I don't know that lady. She ain't did none to me. I ain't got no problem with her. Long as he happy, I don't really care. And, you know, a lot of the times when our exes move on to somebody else, I do feel like people be bringing that shit up like they want you to shade the new person that they with and stuff. Like, why, why do I need to shade them? I wasn't in no relationship with them, and it's not my fault that my ex is with them. They didn't ask to be brought into a situation like this. So why do I need to drag and throw shade at the new person for? What what am I doing that for? What 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 does that solve for me? Dragging this new person for what reason? For what reason? I don't need to drag them. I don't. I don't need to drag them. So what's the fucking point? So I get what Melody coming from, from with that too. Like. She don't give a fuck like they asked her a question about it. She said what she said, and that's it. Um, Stormy was like, well, we're going to the wine tasting event that he's having here in Huntsville. Are you going? Melody said, I really don't know if I'm going. Like, I don't know if I should extend myself and show him all this support at this point if he's going to be walking around starting drama, telling my business and all this other stuff. And, you know, I can't sit up here and be mad with her about that. I mean, he was telling her business to someone that she don't fuck with. Whether that's the mother of your child or not, he was still, you know, you know, you was there's bad history. You telling somebody some shit and you know that they got a bad history and you know how they do. They're going to run the social media with. It. And that's exactly what she did, because I think I talked about that line talking about. Oh, girl, you double sick. He called me. He called you my name. Oh, girl, you double sick. All that stuff. She said all that in a lie. So that is the reason why Melody was already pissed off in the first place, because you bring my name up to this helper. She don't like me. OK, she don't like me. She want a problem with me, you know. So why are you bringing my name up to her? It's no need for you to bring my name up to her. You feel what I'm saying? So one could say that Melody is being petty. But another end is like, nah, she ain't being petty. Like that, like that's really the truth. Like, why go and do that? You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, I understand where she's coming from with that, you know. And I was waiting, you know, I was waiting to see, you know, because sometimes when she do shit like that, I'd be like, girl, you being petty, like, girl, you just want a problem, like, stop it. But that's not the case here. I don't think that's the case. So I'm going to give her a little leeway with that because I don't want nobody talking about me to Ariana ass either because all she's going to do is go live. 
be her son a damn popsicle stick so he can shut the hell up and move on and start talking about everybody else and what the fuck they got going on as if she got anything going on her damn self. But that's another story. We're going to move on to the next. So Martel, Chris Fletcher, and Destiny. They are talking about this wine tasting thing. You know what I mean? And here go Destiny acting like she ain't got shit else to do. Oh, she ain't got nothing else to do. That, that, that's the problem. She ain't got shit else to do but to talk about somebody that she don't like. That's what it is. Okay, so they start talking about Sheree. And, um, you know, Martel really don't want to talk about Sheree right now. Like, he just wants to make this about, you know, what he got going on with his wine business. Like, he don't really want to talk about Sheree right now because, you know, they just starting off. You know, they just started the date. You know, they doing their thug thizzle. Why does he need to talk about Sheree with them? They just started talking. You know, you can't you can't be so quick. You know, I guess because they're so used to him being with Melody. Now that he got a whole nother woman, it's a public thing. They feel like, OK, it, this needs to be addressed. We need to talk about it. But no, they just started dating. He don't know where this going to go. Like they are still in the dating phase. Like regardless of how public it is, he don't want to talk about it right now. This is all about his wine and all of this stuff here. So that's the thing. So, you know, let him enjoy himself with somebody else and not sit up and talk about melody all day because that's the one thing that i don't need him to do is constantly 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 talk about melody oh melody is oh she got fellatio from a whole nother nigga oh melody was messing around with the lawyer melody was doing that no matter what melody did it still don't mean that i wasn't wrong for cheating on our regard oh melody this oh melody that oh this like shut the hell up we're over it. We're tired. Let him do him. Okay. And Melody, not not Melody. And Destiny, where the fuck y'all man at? We saw that man one damn time. No, we didn't even see him. We heard him on the phone one damn time. And we ain't heard nothing from him. Where y'all man at? Since she's so focused and so worried about what the hell Martell got going on and who he's sleeping with. Where y'all man at? Where the fuck Moses at? At the Red Sea? Where he at? That's what I want to know. Where the fuck Moses is since you got so much to say about what somebody else got going on? Where Moses is? But then again, Destiny don't show her damn life. So then as they were talking about Sheree, Destiny starts playing Mel's interview. And I'm like, girl, see, this is the reason why people be dragging your stupid ass. This is the reason why people be dragging you. Because, see, you acting like you so obsessed with this fucking girl. Melody ain't said shit about you. So what was the whole point of you playing that interview for Martell in the first place? See, this is the reason why people was coming down on my ass all summer for defending you, okay? Like, this is the reason why people be saying you was running back telling Martell shit that you knew about Melody, running back telling him Melody's business. And you see how fast you ran back to play that interview that she did with TMZ or whoever the fuck she did it with to talk about Martell and Sheree? That was not called for at all it wasn't called for what was the point if i i would never waste my time talking about nobody that i don't like like that period like at all like i don't sit around and and get on the phone and be like girl do you see what the fuck blah 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 if i don't fucking like you you don't exist to me like i don't fuck with you you dead to me you lay down you lay down in green pastures i have nothing else to say nothing else to give to you or your situation that's just the truth here that's just the truth so what the fuck are you like what what's the fucking point you feel what i'm saying what's the point of that what was the point of you playing it Oh, you didn't have a point? Oh, okay. We already knew you didn't have no point. So what was the what was the reason for that? That's the part I'm trying to understand. What was the fucking reason for all of that? What was the reason? Because you didn't have that, that you didn't even have that for the do. But it just goes back to the theory that you're obsessed with Melody. I mean, you don't like her, okay, but you giving bitter vibes. Like you giving bitter that this woman don't want to fuck with you no more. That's what it's giving. And I don't even I don't even like Melody like that. Let's let's be clear. This ain't no Melody to talk at all up in here. This is just real shit. I'm on the side of right, regardless of who I like and who I don't like. And I just think that Destiny is way too invested in what the fuck Melody got going on. She even too invested in what the fuck Martell got going on. But she got to be invested because she can't. She, she ain't got shit to be invested in. What the fuck Madonna doing? Is Brenda still watching over your style, girl? Where that brush it? 
you still selling fifteen dollar brushes and shit. Like, what the fuck is you talking about? Like, like, what is you talking about? Again, nothing, because you ain't got shit to fucking talk about. That's why you got to relish and revel in somebody else's misfortune and what else and whatever else they got going on. That's the thing that I don't like about Destiny. Like, as much as I was rooting for her and wanted her to make it, she just come across like a broke ass bomb that's mad about what everybody else got going on in their damn life. You the main one with the least going on on this show. You need to find you something to do instead of finding your way in other folks' damn business. Let's keep it funky. Okay, let's keep it real and let's keep it funky. Like, you need to focus on your own damn business instead of focusing on motherfuckers you don't like. That's giving a bitter taste. Now you say the juice is sour. It used to be so sweet. That's what, what that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you are a big disappointment, Destiny. A big disappointment. But you ain't the only one that's running your mouth and talking about a person that you don't like. Cause we're going to the next scene, and these two people are the main ones talking about somebody that they don't like either. So Letitia and Marso, they sit down and they talking. And then the next thing you know, they start discussing the wine event and how, you know, everybody's um, excited about going. You know, Martel got this going on and it's, it's good for him and all of this other stuff. So then Marcel was like, yeah, me and the guys are going to have a good time while you and the girls get to arguing. And then Letitia was like, <laughs> why do you think we're going to argue? Because that's all the fuck y'all do is fucking argue. And go back and forth over shit that we don't give a fuck about. That's all the fuck y'all do is argue over stupid ass shit. Let's keep it funky here. That's all y'all do is go back and forth about shit that don't matter. For real. That's all y'all fucking do. Period. Y'all don't have nothing else to do but to argue and to talk about one person. You feel what I'm saying? But everybody's happy about this damn wine that Martel is doing. I wonder where he's where they sell it at. Um, so then they discuss Sheree and Mel and Martel. And you know, they were talking about this interview that Mel did. Once again, Letitia reveling in Mel and want Mel to feel some type of way about Martel being with somebody else. That lady does not care about Martel moving on with Sheree. If anything, she shouldn't even give a fuck because of the shit that he already put her through already. Having a whole five, six year relationship with a whole nother woman while he married to her and gave the, and gave the woman a child. Why should she be pressed about what Martel is doing? I would hope she ain't, because if she is, she dumb as a motherfucker if she's actually feeling any type of way about what he doing. Y'all more invested in it than she is, to be honest, okay? Y'all are more invested than she is. She don't care, and she should not care at all. Again, this is coming from a person that don't even like this woman. But y'all making me defend her because y'all look pressed as a motherfucker. She don't care about him at all. Not, not, a, not a single care in the world about not a drop of a fuck to, to give about this man. And then Marceau talking about, he, you know, Melody was fine when Martel was leveling down. But now that he's leveling up, she don't like that. First of all, Sheree is not a level up. Let's be real. Sheree is a dud, just like Martel. Sheree is toxic, just like Martel. Sheree is misguided, just like Martel. Sheree is broke, just like Martel. The only difference is she worked with the with, with Bravo and the Housewives of Atlanta, and they got way more poor than a fucking Love and Marriage Huntsville in the own network. That's the only difference. She's not that much of a level up. At least Melody got an actual business. What the fuck does Sheree has? Uh, Sheree has she by Sheen. I mean, that's not that much of a leveling up, Marceau. And see, Marceau, stop speaking on everybody else's relationship because you don't want nobody speaking on yours. See, that's the thing with you and Letitia. Y'all sit up and y'all talk about everybody else and have so many opinions about other people's business. But as soon as somebody come to y'all about this Alonda shit and, and your big ass back being shown in somebody's hotel room, bed and shit, then y'all don't want to deal with the foolishness, as Marceau would call it. But y'all be having so much to say about everybody else. Make it make sense. 
it don't it don't again making me defend this woman once more someone that i don't like come on now anyway so after them sitting up talking about that we go to the wine event it looks much better than the one in atl um the first thing that Letitia does when she sent, because she over there talking to Stormy, Tiffany, and uh, Destiny. The first thing that Letitia says is, "I wonder if Smith. I wonder if Mel's coming. I wonder if she's gonna come to support Martell. I wonder if Mel's gonna come. I wonder if she's gonna come." I'm like, "Why do you care? Why do you give a fuck if she comes or not?" Is that going to make your day if she show up? I'm just being honest, y'all. Is that going to make her fucking day if that lady shows up to her ex-husband's event? I don't know why she was so pressed to know if she was coming or not. You don't like Mel. She your enemy, remember? Why do you care if she comes? Because like I said, one thing about me, if I don't like you, child, I don't give a fuck if you here, there, or everywhere else. I don't give a damn. Tisha just... Mail, 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 mail. You know how the cat was on a meow miss commercial. Meow, 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 meow. And for for mail, 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 mail. That's all she do is talk about mail all the time. Like, girl, get a grip. Do you have do you got a crush on her? That's all you do is talk about her. You and destiny. It's crazy to me. Um so then Tiffany Missy ass brings up the fact that Destiny and Mel, you know, was at the photo shoot and she asked Destiny if she's cool with Mel. Destiny says, nah, we not cool. So defensive, so aggressive. Like, girl, calm the fuck down. I get it. Tiffany was being messy, but you ain't got to bring all that extra off that you're trying to bring. Like, Destiny is so damn bothered and angry all the fucking time. Girl, it's a, a simple no but suffice. Why the fuck you got to bring all the extra shit into that? Like, just say, we not cool. You know, we cordial. You know, we could be in the same room together, but that's it. You know, we not really friends, you know. But another thing, too, though, she probably tired of everybody bringing up the fact that they're not friends no more, constantly asking her if they're going to be friends. Like, everybody ain't meant to be friends with each other. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Why? Everybody's not meant to be friends. Everybody's not meant to have no conversations. I hate when people ask me shit about folks of yesteryear. Stop asking me about them. We don't fuck with each other. I ain't got no issue with them, but we, we don't fuck with each other no more. And we never will fuck with each other ever again. So just move on, deal with that. And that's it, because I've dealt with it. So you're going to have to deal with it too. Leave me alone. It's just that simple. Leave me alone. So, um... After that, um, what happened after that? So then she was like, what a destiny was like, well, the only person at the event that irked me was you, Tiffany. And I'm like, but Tiffany always being Tiffany asking evasive questions, but don't want to be transparent about her own shit all the time. You know, she does that a lot. Um, so then Chris Fletcher confronted Marceau about, you know, him using him as an alibi and stuff like that. And, you know, I was with you, I was with my wife too, you know. I feel like Chris Fletcher didn't want to be a part of that bullshit. And you know what I'm saying? So that's why he decided to confront Marceau about it because he didn't want to be a part of that. And who would want to be a part of some shit like that? You know, you getting caught up in some bull in a web of bullshit, dealing with your wife or a possible person in Atlanta. And then you want to bring me into this shit to be your alibi. Uh-uh, leave me out of your shit. If you was doing some grimy ass shit to your wife, leave me the fuck up out of it. I don't want no parts of your shit. Don't put me in it. That's all I'm saying, okay? Um, so Letitia asked Stormy and Tiffany if they talk to Mel. Why do you care if they talk to Mel or not? Please tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why do you care, Tisha? If you want to know anything about Mel, pick up the phone and call her. Instead of asking everybody else about her ass. She ain't here for a reason. Um, Martel said that him and Sheree thought it was a good idea for Sheree not to come because they're not going to focus on their wine. They're going to focus more about whether or not he and Sheree are dating. That's probably the best thing because she was going to get all the attention when nobody going to be thinking about Martel. So then, you know, Martel gives a speech. He acts like he can't read word for damn, but okay. Mm, I don't give a fuck about that speech. So then, um, 
that's when Kimmy calls to Stormy and Destiny and she tells them about her breast cancer and stuff like that. Because Kimmy, I mean, because Stormy wanted to know what was going on with Kimmy when they was at, you know, at our house or whatnot. So then um, this, so we key to it, we cut to another moment, which I felt like was the best moment of the show. That's when Marcel pulled Jalen to the side and asked him how he was feeling about his mama having cancer. And a lot of the times we don't really think about the kids and how they're actually feeling because they're dealing with it too. Yeah, Kimmy's dealing with it, but Jalen is dealing with it too. And me knowing that my classmate that we just buried on Friday died of cancer so fast after finding out, and she got two daughters. You know, we don't think about the kids sometimes, you know, but for me, that was the first thing that I thought about. So, you know, I'm glad that Jalen pretty much spoke his his truth and his hurt and the way he feels watching his mother go through that because, you know, he said he never seen his mama cry before up until, you know, Mar, uh, Mar uh, Tishy Mayor Maurice and when they started taping the show, like he had never seen her cry before. And now he's seeing her, you know, going through this and he feel like he got to be strong for her sake. You feel what I'm saying? So I get what he's talking about. You know, it's hard to watch your mama go through pain and going through stuff and all that. And, you know, you got to be strong for her sake because, you know, she's already down and out and she needs somebody else. She needs a warrior on her side. But when you alone, that damn pain hits you and you get to crying and shit like nobody wants to see their parents going through anything. Trust me, I know. So it's it's hard to see it. So, but Marceau was a good uncle for that. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm glad that he actually took out the time to talk to Jalen and pick his brain and see where his head is. You know what I mean? It goes to show you that Marceau actually cares about somebody other than himself. I was that was a good scene. Like I was very glad to see that scene. Like that was probably the best moment of this entire episode. I'm not even gonna front. I ain't gonna hold you. That was the best one. I enjoyed that. Um, not enjoying seeing the pain, but you know what I'm trying to say, you know. Um, Kimmy was explaining her condition, her, you know, her situation to the girls and stuff like that. But, you know, she said that she's going to get through it. She's going to get past all of it. You know, she's undergoing, the, you know, chemotherapy and stuff. She's doing her thing. You know, she's going to get past it. So then we go to the last scene of the night. Mel, Mel and Martell. Mel, Mel, Martell comes over. Mel won't let him in the house. And I'm like, we back to the child and shit again. So they argue over the phone. Then, you know, Martel was like, don't be disrespectful. Don't be immature. Like, I let you in my house. Why can't I come in your house? Which he did let her in his house. He said, I'm not going to be standing outside. It's 100 degrees outside and all this other stuff. So Melody confronts Martell about telling Arion his bi her business. And they start going on and on and on about that shit. And on and on about this and that. On and on about that. And I'm just like. First, Melody says that she's not going to chase behind Martell. I'm not going to chase behind that little boy. Then she goes outside to antagonize the man. This be the shit that I be talking about. We don't like Martell. He's a low down, dirty dog. We know that he is. There's, there, there's no, there's no if, ands, and buts about it. But Melody is passive aggressive as fuck. Okay, she's passive aggressive as fuck. People don't like to call her out on her shit, but her ass is fucking passive aggressive. It'd be a lot of shit that she could do to really avoid shit. But then you get people that say she's walked away so many times she's been a bigger person all this time and blah i don't give a fuck it's annoying you feel what i'm saying like this passive aggressive shit irritates me and people cannot stand it when you call it out but i'm gonna call it out melody is is is, is passive aggressive she pokes and shit like she said she wasn't gonna go out there and chase behind him but what the fuck did she do go right on out there and create another another situation she could have said whatever she had to say right there at that fucking door and if he didn't want to hear what he had what she had to say he could have walked away and got up in his truck the same way he fucking did but martell also shouldn't have came back to her fucking house so they can argue about trivial shit you feel what i'm saying at the end of the day, she got a valid point to be mad. She got a reason to be mad, period. Got a reason. But I just don't like the way that she be doing shit sometimes. I don't give a fuck who get mad about it. 
But Martell should just shut the fuck up and not ran her business to the main person that can't stand her. And that's his baby mom. That's what that's what he shouldn't have done at all. That was the bullshit. And this is why they're in the predicament that they're in because he don't know when to shut the fuck up. He didn't even have to bring her up. All he could have said was, like I said already, they got they was around somebody with COVID. You know what I mean? So go, go, go get Knox tested, whatever. He did not have to bring up Melody, knowing how this girl be so quick to go to social media with anything in regards to that lady. Period. You knew that, but you decided to, you know, to run your mouth and you already knew how Melody was going to react to it because as much as people don't want to admit it, she just as childish. She childish as a motherfucker too. All y'all involved is kind of childish and petty and shit. All of y'all are. Regardless of how anybody feels about it, all of y'all are childish. Let's, let, like a lot of y'all, all of y'all can handle things in a different way. But at the end of it all, Martell, you were wrong for running her business. You were wrong for that. You did not have to tell her anything. Melody, stop being passive aggressive. Stop poking a bear. Stop. Stop. Both of y'all get on my nerves. You see how I was taking up for Melody this entire, this entire um, video? But watch. The people going to get mad at this part, even though I defended her this whole video. Right? But y'all, that's my Love and Marriage Chanceville review, you guys. I'm so glad that this shit is over with. All we got is the reunion, and then we are done with this shit. So with that being said, you guys, this be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And also click on that notification bell so you can be notified whenever video drops. If you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, it's all down in the description box below. With that being said, you guys, I am out of here until my next one. I will talk to you guys a little bit later. Bye, y'all. What's up guys, it's your boy Tramel. I just wanted to say that I have a new project that's out. It's called Mixed Feelings. It's on all streaming platforms. I would hope that you would go and check it out. It's a really good feel of an album. It's got everything you need and more. It's got R&B, it's got a little bit of pop, it's got a little bit of hip hop. It's everything that you need and more. It's out, all streaming platforms, like I said, please check me out and you can also follow me at i am underscore tramel that's i am underscore t-r-a-m-e-l check me out hope to hear from you